you to this uh, uh, webinar, which is organized uh, by Society of Cement and Concrete Researchers in Nigeria in conjunction with FIB, and uh, Nigeria Institution of Structural Engineers and Nigeria Institution of Civil Engineers. This is the second in the series of this uh, presentation. Uh, I will quickly mention, as you have seen on the screen, the Society of Cement and Concrete Researchers in Nigeria is still a daily association or society compared to uh, all other developed uh, uh, societies and associations in the, in the area of cement and concrete. This is the first and only society that a, a platform that brings together all the people who are researchers who are also practitioners in cement and concrete and structural concrete at the same time. Uh, the mission of this, this particular society was established in fifth day of uh, November 2019. Though we are still baby and then we are still uh, regrouping ourselves and we are very open to collaborate with well advanced and international organizations like RILEM, like FIB, and all other associations. The main objectives are the main objective of this society is just to create a platform where researchers, experts in concrete can share knowledge and distribute knowledge and also contribute uh, our own uh, idea and create knowledge to really support uh, concrete and uh, cement industries in Nigeria. So I will, I will give the floor to David to introduce FIB why the uh, seminar will be presented later. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kola. I will I will now share my screen, and very shortly I will uh, make a very short introduction of the FIB. Uh, some of you know that the FIB is the International Federation for Structural Concrete, and it's a truly non-for-profit organization dedicated to the to the to creation knowledge and sharing knowledge uh, uh, for uh, for concrete structures. So we have right now forty two uh, statutory members, countries that are members of the FIB, but we have persons from over hundred countries. This is a very old organization that comes from the merge of two other organizations that uh, were created in the fifties, CEB and FIP. And uh, well, I would like to just to say that among among the the countries that we have uh, in all continents, uh, we have uh, from this year Tanzania in Africa and also Iceland, and uh, we are talking now with other countries also in Africa like uh, like Egypt or Tunisia, and uh, the idea basically is uh, how to create and share knowledge uh, in uh, all the all the countries and in all the continents. And this is a very wide uh, network that uh, allows to, to, to share this knowledge and to bring this knowledge to everybody that would like to, to have it. And so this is where a little bit what I was saying now that uh, we are trying, oh, everybody's working in the FIB in a voluntary basis. So we are creating this knowledge with collaboration with uh, many people. And then we share it through different ways. Uh, you will see, you know, the a journal uh, or the FIB bulletins that are books or uh, events like we do seminars and webinars and and we do symposia in a different in different ways. So I will go a little bit forward. Uh, we have a general assembly because the countries are the owners of the FIB. It's a federation, and then a technical council where everything. Uh, it's approved technically and uh, we have uh, as you can see many commissions i cannot go to all of them but they go from the material part to the design construction durability uh, we have a special activity group on sustainability that Agnieszka that we'll talk later is also a key aspect of that and also you can see here the model codes we had a group on the model codes that uh, were we created in the in the in the past and that uh, we Agnieszka will show you today how we have uh, the model code 2020 now uh, available for for everybody very important also the young members group I will tell you a little bit about that okay this is the presidium you can see our people from from many countries the president uh, this year and the past year is Steve Foster the next president will be 
from Brazil, Iria Doniak, but you can see here Agnieszka that we'll talk later, and persons from uh, from many from many places and very very well uh, balanced uh, in the in in the world. So we have different different uh, ways of publication. As I say, we have the bulletins on many different topics that can be accessed online. The FIB sus subscribing members can can view all these documents online and all the 600 documents from CV and FIP. Model code, we'll talk a little bit, Agnieszka later, so I will not say anything. And we have this, this uh, structural concrete journal that uh, people can publish for free eh, and it's uh, grown a lot and has a very good impact. And for uh, academia, mo mostly it's, it's important. And But we also like to have uh, uh, practice papers. No, uh, The motto of the FIB is a bridge between research and practice. This is the journal. Uh, can access through the Wiley webpage. FIB members can access to to all the articles and the and the issues as a PDF uh, for free. And well, there's a lot of do to do to do that. And then uh, and all the bulletins and the model code can be accessed through the bot, of course, uh, but also can be accessed in the FIB webpage in the in the viewer, hmm? as you can see here. Uh, you can also see the model code in the FIB webpage in the viewer. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you are interested, there is a lot of videos with keynote speak, uh, with presentation of bulletins, with a lot of knowledge in our YouTube channel. So if you are interested, please go to the YouTube channels to take to take a look. And we also post a lot of news in the, in, uh, in in social media and in in uh, many places like LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say that we have a very good uh, young members group. This young members group is very active. And uh, if there are, we call young members uh, under 35 years old. So um, we'll be happy to connect anybody of you into uh, with our young members and they create a parallel collaborative efforts that are very interesting. And maybe you are very interested in that. And I would just finish with this slide. Uh, with the next events that we will have, a PhD symposium that happens every two years. This year will be in in Budapest, Hungary, or sustainability event in Portugal, or the symposia that we have every year. This year is in Christchurch, New Zealand, and next year will be in a, in Antique, France. Uh, we also have another event next year that is the conceptual design for for designers and practical people that we do also every two years. So. Saying this, I just want to give uh, all the time possible for Agnieszka that has a very interesting presentation on what is the model code, very important document, the most important document that FIB does. And up to now, we, it has taken us 10 years to, to do this document. And Agnieszka is, as you have seen, Presidium member, a senior researcher from TNO in the Netherlands, and has so many hats in the FIB. She has worked very, very hard for the model code since she has worked both in the model code 2010 and in the model code 2020. So she's the best person that can introduce you to what is going on and what is the future of, of concrete structures. So please, Agnieszka, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, uh, David, and thank you for your kind invitation. This will be about content and it will be pretty fast because I need to tell you uh, about the work that has taken place at FIB over the last 10 years and uh, amounted to hundreds of pages of knowledge and uh, about concrete and concrete structures. So excuse me for the very fast forward mode, but uh, in the question uh, moment, you will have the opportunity to ask what is most important uh, to you. Um, what I will try to explain to you is what the actually model codes are and why do we make them and uh, then go into some principles that we have implemented in the newest revision. A uh, few highlights that I thought may be of interest just to go even more deeper into content to show you what do we mean when we say model code uh, um, quality and then uh, about the future developments because we our work is um, is an ongoing process like uh, okay what are the model codes a model codes is a flagship of FIB we collect a lot of knowledge that we developed in different works uh, work group and commissions in one document and the objective of that document is to serve all around the world as the basis for drafting 
national local codes and provisions for um, design assessment, um, maintenance of concrete structures, and also uh, it's relevant for all the provisions that are related to the construction materials that are using being used in concrete structures domain. Um, we do uh, a lot to incorporate the newest findings. So model codes are up to date. We go into the uh, level of detailing that is beyond the most Europe uh, were code worldwide because we want to have that relevance for um, also further development of knowledge, um, which means that we want to stay where the needs are the largest at this moment. This is definitely sustainability. In the moment, you will hear more what we developed and made available in order to address this kind of issues within the domain of concrete uh, structures. Um, we engage with the community worldwide. This is not a development made by one uh, sin single group of academics, of engineers, as David was showing. Um, our members are from uh, all over the world. It means the problems that we addressed are relevant in different parts of the world. This means that we, are, um, we aim to be uh, relevant uh, for different situations, different types of loads, different types of environmental conditions, different types of technology development, um, as it is uh, not uniform and probably will not be for the, uh, some time ago. And uh, this is also reflected in this effort that we made in the Model Code 2020. It was over, as you see, 1,400 um, members of FIB contributing to the work from 76, 67 countries. Um, the Model Codes, we didn't start this year. We are now talking about Model Code Edition 2020, but actually the Model Codes have been developed from 70s. And um, periodically, we have been releasing a new part of our knowledge in the form of the model code. The scope, of course, changed as the knowledge have been developed further. I have personally been involved as technical secretary to drafting model code 2010 that has been re released in 2013. And I was the deputy chair of the task group developing model code 2020 that we have been releasing actually as of today publicly, yes, uh, online. Um, what is the, uh, the effect and impact of this development over the years? Um, in Europe, it's very easy to um, uh, point it out. The European codes, the Euro codes, have been directly based on the development of the series of the um, model codes for concrete structures, at least the part of the Euro code 2 and Euro code 0. Uh, the um, Model code um, uh, edition 76 and served as the basis for the development of the Euro European codes and the currently ongoing revision of the Euro codes is based on the knowledge uh, in model code 2010 and 2020 editions. Um, uh, but let's, or sometimes it's good to know what we have been uh, achieved, uh, what we have been able to achieve in the past, and what was our starting point to develop Model Code uh, 2020. So looking back at the Model Code 2010, and below you see the uh, General Assembly picture that have voted uh, for that approval of the document. Um, uh, we uh, made a major step at that time. We organized our safety format, so the basis of the design have been organized uh, with the focus mainly on new structures, but actually we already started to think ahead, what would that mean for assessment of structures? We have made a major step at that time to incorporate durability as an important uh, aspect of the structural design. So not only safety and serviceability, but also durability, the three major pillars that we uphold also until now. Uh, we have made an attempt to make the con co model code comprehensive with regard to type of loading. Uh, in the past, it was mainly for TIC. At that moment, we cover all the aspects of loads. And uh, we also started to incorporate innovative materials. Um, you will see in the moment how far we got, but the beginning was made uh, with the addition of Model Code 2010. What we have also added and recognized is the importance of conceptual design. It was the first time that we included that part in the code. Also uh, meant to inspire other code writers to acknowledge that certain decisions that are made, made at the conceptual stage cannot be corrected anymore. So there is a huge importance and a huge um, impact of that stage of design. Um, model, not modern tools of analysis, numerical analysis have been included, and we also pointed towards the importance of looking at the full life cycle of a structure. 
But what was not yet in the main focus, although mentioned, was sustainability. With drafting of Model Code 2020, we understood uh, that the times are changing and we are now um, in the need of addressing new challenges and new needs. Sustainable development goals is the perspective from which we visioned uh, look at the um, challenges for the Model Code 2020, but with the ambition for the code to be future oriented and open to uh, accommodate new technologies as they are developing very fast. What was also one of the very explicit um, objective was to recognize that there is um, a lot of existing concrete assets already, and uh, we have to um, we have to uh, acknowledge that this. Uh, are new challenges for the designers. Assessment is not exactly the same process as design. The methods may look similar, but the uh, conditions, the availability of information is different. So that uh, um, uh, perspective, new and existing structures is one of the main uh, points uh, that were improved in the model code 2020. And shifting towards performance-based approach, which is necessary to accommodate innovation. Now, what is the sustainability in the model code? We define sustainability as three pillars, environmental, societal, and economic pillar. So it's not only about mitigating impact on the environment, it's also about being able to finance designs, constructions, and maintenance that meet these requirements. It's also necess necessary to fulfill all the societal requirements that also include, of course, requirements with regard to structural performance. Um, this is uh, fundamental when I will be talking about sustainability. I will be always referring to the balanced equilibrium of these three pillars that need to be taken into consideration when taking uh, decisions. Well, a very important thing is also to understand that we make structures for purpose. So there is a, um, um, always a reason and requirement that comes from either policy objectives or uh, some legal obligations or from the recognition of the needs of owners, of stakeholders. So it's uh, also part of the model code to explicitly say that the performance-based approach requires definition of the performances and that different parties will need to be involved in that process. The composition of performance requirements into technical specification with which structural engineers can work is must be done in collaboration between the owners or other stakeholders, designers, but also material suppliers, contractors, and all involved in the chain of the construction uh, um, concrete uh, sector um, interaction. Uh, this performance requirements um, although they may be uh, formulated at the high level, must be translated into criteria, the criteria that can be interpreted and evaluated during the design process, during construction, and during the use of the structures. Uh, so uh, one of the important um, um, guidance in the model code is how to transform performance requirements into performance criteria. Well, and one core element of the model code, which probably takes the most of the pages, is to how evaluate this aspect of the performance with the models, with tests, and with the validation processes. Um, uh, well, we recognize performance um, uh, in these three domains, environmental, economic, structural, and societal, and the model code provides the models and methods to evaluate all these aspects of the performance. Uh, what in the end needs to be done is the um, sustainability decision making, which means the balanced decision making in context of these three objectives. There is also explicit notion how to do it. Well, this diagram shows the conceptual um, visualization of, of how different stages of the design assessment and um, service life are connected with each other. In certain sense, it's also visualizes the structure of the model codes. If the, each of these blocks has been given a place in the model code with the description, how to handle it and what is needed uh, to do it in terms of input parameters. In the moment, I will show you actually the table of content of the model code. So you will probably be better uh, able to recognize these different, this different connected blocks. Uh, now, a few words about the fundamental concepts that we defined and follow uh, all over through all the models that we developed. And I will start with the one that is 
probably very well recognizable for structural engineers. Um, our safety philosophy is based on risk, acceptance, and reliability concept. It means that um, we um, did fundamental work together with other associations to um, understand what is actually the acceptance of the risks of concrete structures in different situations for new structures and for existing structures. Um, and uh, we also developed number of methods that uh, allow to evaluate compliance with this kind of requirements in a different level of the refinement. This slide shows you the range of the approaches that are made available within the model code, ranging from the very simple um, uh, evaluation by avoidance of deterioration of evaluations by deemed to satisfy rules to the very complex reliability based uh, formats and risk informed formats for evaluation. In the middle, you see the most frequently used, the partial factor format and the global resistance format. So this full range covers different situation in which depending on the criticality of structure, engineers may need to follow very um, uh, advanced design approach or can do it with a rather simplified, cheap, but still reliable um, uh, design pr procedures. Um, that may se seems a bit of complex to understand, and I, I don't believe I can explain it well in, in few minutes, but uh, the me general message is what we have observed is that there was a different situation with regard to new and to existing structures, giving different um, effort to make new structures more safe and existing structures more safe. That led to the observation that um, economic optimum for this kind of activities is not the same, which means that we can and we propose to consider different um, target reliability levels for new structure, higher, and for existing structures, slightly lower, but yet still fulfilling all the requirements for the safety of humans. There is only difference with regard to um, impact on the operations, but it would come with such a big cost in case of existing structures that would not be economically optimal to, um, to have this kind of uh, strong targets. So in the model code, we have uh, differentiation also in terms of partial factors being provided for the design of new structures and for the assessment of existing structures when we recognize two level, a level of disapproval, a level to which we need to upgrade existing structures in case they do not meet the requirements at this moment. Uh, what is also um, throughout the whole model code, the general concept is that for all aspects of evaluations, we intended to provide models of the behavior with different refinement and different accuracy. It means that uh, there are models uh, of, uh, of the lower level of approximation, simple to use, and um, accurate enough in the standard cases, but there are also levels of these models up to the most sophisticated models, quite often uh, based on the numerical analysis, which we, when, with the large effort, we can increase the accuracy of the predictions. Well, the idea behind that is to enable engineers to choose which is the appropriate level of the modeling for their situation, whether they are in need to going into very refined, um, expensive calculations that may demand a lot of input, or are they satisfied in their situation with the simplified calculations that may be a bit more conservative, but they provide a very good approximation for the regular design situations. And that levels of approximation, you will see them through the whole model code for every aspect, starting from sheer punching, a torsion, uh, uh, whatever you uh, whatever you would need. Um, and here is an example, maybe more to illustrate what do we mean by the level of approximation in case of punching shear, where we can see that there are certain mechanisms that are, for instance, compression membrane action, which are not mobilized. Uh, in a sense of numerical um, uh, in the, the lower approximation um, approach, but we account for that kind of mechanism when we provide models at the higher level of approximation. Still, these are models, but they do account for certain behavior aspects 
uh, in uh, the deeper we go in, in our improvement of the uh, accuracy. Um, and another very important principle that you also reflected in the model code is that we look at the full life cycle. Concrete structures are not only about constructing them, uh, they are about using them up to their maximum and using them in such a way that we can extend their service life and, um, and knowing that it's one of the most sustainable approaches to concrete structures is to use them in an appropriate way. And here in the model code, we have included uh, the general concept, but also some very specific provisions, which I highlighted few of them. One of them is durability planning. I will go into more details um, about that uh, in a minute, showing few highlights, because it's a very important new part of the model code that highlights that durability planning is something that has been done even before the structure is being built in order to uh, be uh, to give the proper guidance to the one who are responsible for that process during the uh, use of the structure. Uh, the same is with the performance evaluation of existing structures. Few highlights in the moment. Uh, this is also something assessment is also a part of the task of the uh, engineers. And intervention of, uh, on the existing structure uh, remediation um, works. It's also something that we have added to the model code 2020 as a separate, very distinctive part of our provisions. Um, now, um, in, a, in a very speedy mode, um, uh, and I hope you will read it when I am talking so I don't have to read everything, the basic chapters and parts of the model code. Um, uh, the scope I already explained, it's new and existing structures, including structures with interventions, full scope of loads and environmental conditions, and broad scope of materials uh, for design. I will show a few slides later. Uh, in the first part of the uh, model code, we include basic principles, more or less what I just have explained, but going even deeper, principles of execution conservations, life cycle management, and also attention for circularity and processes of reuse and dismantlement. A very important part uh, is um, giving the principles of the structural verification. This is essential for all code writers. You have to understand what your models are built upon. This is the foundation. This is where all the basics are given with regard to reliability targets, with regard to partial factors, uh, with regard to methods of structural design from the more um, um, generic point of view. When do we use plasticity theories? Where do we use other theories? This is, this is the part of the concept. Then we have a huge part, which is about input parameters to the models. Um, we distinguish in the input parameters for the actions, uh, materials, and interfaces. Of course, we are talking about Restressed of reinforced concrete, so the bond is an essential part. As you will see, we also include materials that are non-metallic reinforcement, fiber reinforced uh, concrete, and also materials for uh, protection, repair, and upgrading. Um, uh, this input will be fundamental. Uh, there here are also methods provided for assessing the input, so testing methods are referred to, but also models by which you can derive different properties of the materials based on a certain data and information. And now the main part of the book, uh, it's um, all the procedures and guidance for the design and assessment. Um, as you see, we have the uh, conceptual design up front for a reason that I already mentioned, uh, also for the purpose of education of the engineers. And we have the chapter 30, which is huge, and it includes everything that you would expect to find in the code for the structural design and more. Uh, for all types of loads that we recognize, static and non-static, for uh, uh, different thermal conditions, both for reinforced and concrete structures, we provide here models for uh, evaluation of ultimate limit states, structural safety, and serviceability, and models for uh, assessing durability in existing structure and designing new structures with regard to durability for the service life required. Uh, there are also provisions given for fiber reinforced um, structures. And here we uh, use term fiber reinforced concrete also with regard to ultra high strength concrete. So this is a huge uh, spectrum of the materials and uh, also um, provisions for the use of the FRP reinforcement. Um, 
For this of you who are using nonlinear finite element analysis, this is, uh, as far as I know, quite unique. Our model code also provides provisions for use of uh, finite element analysis for reinforced concrete structures uh, with all the information about the appropriate safety formats, uh, modeling uncertainties, and all that you need to do your analysis um, as, an, as an engineer. Very important part is also related to uh, structural performance supported by testing and monitoring. These technologies are um, coming more and more into use. Uh, they are, again, ranging between very advanced monitoring system, but also proof loading of structures. In that chapter, we give the provisions how to benefit from the information coming from uh, this kind of um, um, additional uh, possibilities. Um, uh, interventions already mentioned. Uh, detailing, very practical, and encourages. And as you see, we complete that chapter with the chapters related to evaluation of uh, environmental quality, uh, economic performance, and balanced sustainable decision-making for concrete structures. There are also um, chapters just as important as the one that I mentioned. It maybe seems short on that page, but they are not short and uh, are empty in content. Chapters regarding execution, um, uh, both execution of construction work and execution of interventions, chapter regarding conservation, and there you find everything that you need uh, to know about the processes, criteria, uh, and techniques used in conservation. Also, the uh, chapters about uh, type of uh, interventions and methods is, is there. And the very last one, more future-oriented towards circularity and dismantlement. Now, after that introduction, I will only go into a few highlights, and it probably will be very shallow, but uh, please forgive me for that. Um, what do we cover? What kind of new materials did we uh, include in the model code? Well, we um, intended to include probably more, but um, uh, we are at least able to include ultra high performance concrete, fiber reinforced concrete intervention materials. You also find the properties of all concretes for assessment, it's very important, and certain provision for certain type of um, innovative materials for um, uh, with low carbon uh, um, properties. Um, there is also a strong reference to testing and recommendation how to use material uh, testing in assessing properties for structural, uh, structural design. Uh, one very well developed chapter in which we are, I think, pretty successful to give the full uh, spectrum of the provisions is the use of recycled uh, aggregate concrete. Um, uh, here you will see uh, the methods for um, assessing principle, uh, material properties, but also the provisions for the design and assessment and execution with, with this kind of uh, material. Uh, actually, that part was basis for the new revision of the European Euro code. So this is really fresh and uh, absolutely up to date. Um, uh, fiber reinforced concrete, again, the similar situation. To use this material, we need to extend the models with, regard, with respect to this use for the traditional type of concrete. In the chapter of the model code, you find the provisions for assessing the properties of the material and benefiting from this ex, uh, um, enhanced properties, in particular uh, ductility in structural uh, design. And one of the examples here given is the behavior in shear, where we again tried to use similar models to the design with uh, traditional concrete, so there is also a kind of generic approach to shared design provided in the model code. And one notion before it will, I will forget it. You see, when you look at the page from the model code, extract from the code, model code, it has two columns. Uh, column on the right provides the provisions, column on the left provides explanations. Uh, it means that a uh, model code is a kind of a combination of the regular design code but also a kind of the uh, textbook, well, well, though it's not intended to be as extensive as a textbook, but you will find the backgrounds with a lot of cross references to other background document. So at least there is an explanation and reasoning why certain choices have been made. And through all the pages of the model code, you will always find these two columns next to each other. Um, 
as also on, with regard to non-metallic reinforcement, very innovative type of material that is becoming more and more popular uh, nowadays. We have included provisions both for um, embedded FRP rebirth and for externally applied reinforcement. And again, for assessing material properties and for design assessment and execution, both for new structures, but also in use as um, uh, materials for the repair of existing structures. With that, for very new types of materials that are uh, not explicitly handled within specific chapter, we also try to include provisions that will explain how to assess whether regular uh, provisions given in the model code or any other codes can still be used for these new materials. And here is an example of the bond test by which you can assess whether the bond provisions of the traditional concrete can be still applied, for instance, for the new type of concrete, low carbon concrete, uh, just as an example. Um, uh, another thing that I wanted to uh, draw your attention to is this durability planning. Well, this is a very important chapter that we included for the first time, inspired by the work of our Australian colleagues, and uh, this covers the uh, processes uh, which explain how to incorporate durability consideration in design execution and maintenance uh, to avoid issues uh, caused by lack of appropriate um, um, uh, handling of the st existing structures. And it um, extends both uh, towards the uh, structures that require formal durability planning and structures that do not require, require this kind of processes. And here, a lot of um, expertise uh, uh, support can be can be found um, uh, together with the flowcharts how to organize it. Um, for the assessment, um, uh, there are different levels of assessment made available within the model code provisions. The one that is uh, appropriate for structures without deterioration, but also for structures with deterioration and structures with non-compliant reinforcement, there are models included. Uh, and uh, we can also use this kind of models uh, in the different level of format with use of information, with less information, with more information, all these levels are being addressed. And here is an example of um, what we provided with regard to structures that are uh, damaged or in that particular case on that slide um, affected by corrosion. Model code covers corrosion, alkali silica reaction, free throw damage and sulfide attack. Um, there are models that are extended to account for the effect of damage in assessing, like in that example, shear capacity of a structure. So for all this type of deterioration, you will find an extent, uh, extension of the models uh, to uh, evaluate capacity and also models to evaluate time-dependent um, development of these processes. And one of the very practical uh, aspects that have been included is also, for instance, safety evaluation by proof loading. Uh, sometimes very fast methods are needed and this kind of provisions, how to assess the safety um, and compliance with targets within the proof loading provisions is also included. Just many of the of the other examples. And a very fine, uh, final part that I would like to uh, discuss uh, is the uh, including interventions on existing structures. We do need to make interventions, um, preventive of remedial or uh, strengthening interventions. Um, that aspect is covered in the model code, both with regards to procedure and um, approach to uh, defining and designing interventions, but also uh, with the very practical guidance, how to, for instance, dimension interventions for increasing shear resistance of increasing uh, punching shear resistance in, in certain, um, uh, certain uh, situations. So you find both the general guidance, but also specific, uh, specific models. Well, to conclude, what we have aimed with the model code, and I hope we have been successful, is to provide guidance for all the stages in the um, um, life cycle of the structure, design, execution, conservation. Uh, we also, uh, for the existing structure, um, put a lot of effort to elaborate how the assessment can be made, how the conservation should be done, and how the adaptation of the structures for uh, new circumstances could be undertaken. Um, well, our principle allow us to uh, say that we support creation of sustainable concrete structure, 
Um, this three pillars of sustainability, you will find it throughout the whole code. And this is the message that we are trying to send that structural design is a part of the bigger uh, picture in which we are actually creating sustainable built environment. Uh, what we also want to achieve is uh, on top of providing better tools and techniques, also to help engineering community to um, increase their skills. Sharing knowledge is a very effective way of uh, learning from each other. Worldwide, there is a lot of different uh, knowledge and experience available. By sharing that, we just help ourselves to, uh, to, be, to be better. Uh, in that sense, uh, the model code is also, can also be a support in uh, R&D activities or academic activities. Um, and to uh, probably similar to what David already showed you, on the YouTube channel, you will find uh, a number of um, uh, videos that highlight particular aspects of the model code 2020. And we have also published on Structural Concrete Journal and um, special issue in which we again address a number of the particular uh, um, aspects that uh, are innovative with, uh, and uh, distinguish our um, work from the work of others. Um, and that is that is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Very complete and very interesting. We have a bunch of questions in the chat. I will read them to you. Uh, so you can uh, so you can see no? um, the first one is by Junus Balim. Uh, pardon of my knowledge, but how does the FIB code relate to the Euro code? Okay, uh, I will repeat it very clearly. Yeah. Euro codes are um, founded on the same foundation as the model code. So first of all. We do follow the same safety philosophy as the Euro codes, or other way around. Euro codes follows the same safety philosophy as FIB. Uh, so there is no discrepancy. We use limit state approach. We use risk reliability based approach. Uh, we use partial factors. We uh, uh, that, that's generic. Um, in terms of the innovation, uh, we aim at FIB to be always ahead of the Euro code development. And, and that's also the case at present. We are developments that are uh the still ongoing revision euro code uh, revised euro code will be released probably in 2028 model code is released in uh, 2023 2024 uh, by 28 we hope to have a new knowledge added to it there is no uh, conflict between these two concepts uh but yeah that our um our scope is broader and models are probably more detailed uh, at certain level that you will find more refined models, yes. Okay, well, there are some comments uh, from uh, Wolfram also in the in the chat, but I will go to the next uh, to the next question. This is by Wolfram and I jump one of them because he says how we can briefly a uh, discussion how regional adaptations of the model code can look or how we can they be incorporated? Okay, uh, that, I think that's a very good question. And actually, we have came across that issues when drafting Model Code 2020, because as I said, it's a worldwide development. So uh, colleagues from different regions do come with observations, and uh, they are sometimes pretty uh, uh, confronting, yes? Um, uh, what do we have? Um, we tried to accommodate different uh, climatic conditions, for instance. Yes, so um, uh, that's that's one of the things. We tried also to reflect on different um, uh, technologies. We had a very good, interesting discussions with our colleagues from Brazil about their uh, technology development and local needs, uh, and that that has been reflected in our approach to setting um, requirements for. Uh, reliability requirements for existing structures, for instance. So uh, uh, things like formal and informal um, uh, buildings, uh, things such as durability planning, which actually comes from the recognition of the lack of certain practices um, in, uh, in certain um, uh, certain situations where, where this experience uh, can be shared. Um, what we do usually, uh, we uh, we have this uh, input provided towards the committee that is developing. By the way, I didn't mention that. We have finished model code 2020, but the process of revision and improvement of the model code is a continuous process. We will 
uh, uh, soon start with the uh, looking ahead and, uh, and work on the further developments. So that there are also an, uh, a lot of opportunities to fill the gaps if there are the gaps missing. If, however, the question of Wolfram was there more are several towards... questions on how to include new materials, how to include uh, things in the in the model code. So it's a good moment here to. to yeah. See. Okay. So um, uh, well, the question how to include can be read in two ways. Yes. How do we proceed in including something, and how we do it in the technical way. Uh, first, maybe about how do we want to proceed with including the materials that are not yet included. Um, as I say, we will continue with the work on the model code, and uh, we will uh, initiate, uh, hopefully soon, uh, David knows more, a uh, uh, task group that will be uh, working on it. And there we will um, start to um, bring in the knowledge that has been developed basically over the last two, three years to enable the following. We want to enable the use of uh, geopolymers in structural applications uh, that has not yet been uh, included in the model code. We were not ready in 2020 when we increased our level of knowledge, but in the meantime, there have been some very good developments. So this will be one of the uh, high priority topic. Uh, another aspect will be to include um, equivalent performance approach for evaluation of uh, performance with regard to durability of new materials. This is also something that seems to be feasible to be achieved uh, in a short time. Um, how do we do it technically? Uh, I think we will uh, always remain on the same basis. We look always at uh, uh, which kind of, um, uh, well, uh, when, we, when I refer to risk and reliability basis of the model code, I refer basically to how do we handle uncertainties with regard to material properties and how do we handle uncertainties with regard to structural or durability behavior. The same will happen for the new materials. We will need to re revisit the, the, the information and see what kind of uncertainties are there. Are they similar to the uncertainties we knew in the past? Can we handle them with the same approaches? Uh, basically, will the material uncertainty will be the same or will it be different? And if so, how can we formulate it and capture it in the in, in, in models? Um, uh, for the what kind of um, technologies, for instance, testing can we uh, use and prescribe to assess certain material properties that are needed for the evaluation? When we look at the structural behavior model, we do have, of course, a lot of models. We will have to see whether the models are uh, adequate to describe structural behavior of these materials. Let's say brittleness of certain materials will make some models less relevant. Um, Long-term effect of grip, grip and shrinkage, usually not explicitly considered, may need to be considered. We, we have a background to do it. So there will be a kind of parallel uh, development uh, with regard to structural behavior model of durability, uh, performance models, uh, once we know it, we are ready to launch the uh, the new part of the extended provisions. Okay, thank you. I will go to other questions to see if we can have time to. This is uh, also interesting because this uh, Safra Bugofa who says hello. I would like to ask the results you presented are based on experimental research, numerical, or both, and uh, who okay. can contribute to the so. The, one part you have answered already, but uh, it's good to clarify this. Uh, so uh, first, maybe about this, uh, if I understand correctly, but maybe I misunderstood, David, was it about the basis of the development of the models? Yes. 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 If, if the if the, the regulations that we give are given on base uh, based on research exactly. uh, on tests yes. or also on on let's say conceptual. Uh... Uh, exactly. So uh, actually, uh, the idea is that uh, all the provisions are developed based on understanding of the behavior. So let's based on physics, chemistry, uh, uh, structural mechanics, and. Um, in parallel on um, uh, risk and reliability in terms of handling uncertainties. So basically, models are physical. What it means, all the models are simplifications. Um, all the models are basically models, schematizations of the behavior. So based on understanding of the physics, we do schematize. And here comes our levels of approximation in which we schematize in less and more refined way. Uh, um, uh, models are always validated. Well, validation, we have 
uh, usually to rely on the experimenting. So uh, that's also one of the interesting things maybe to mention. FIB has also databases that are also available to other researchers. We collect data and we use this data to evaluate models that we provide. And uh, so one of the, uh, well, in the in the scheme that David was showing you about what the FIB has, also databases are a, a critical part because we recognize that models need to be validated. Now, the value of numerical models is twofold. On the one hand, we can use numerical models as a kind of um, virtual experiments. If we can trust the models, then we can do it. It also explains a lot of the, of the behavior. Um, we do also use um, numerical models as a modeling tool for uh, designer assessment. So we also make an effort to make these models adequate to the materials that we are using. Uh, that was the first part of the question. And the second one, sorry, I forgot. No, the, the, sec the, second, the second one, it's, uh, I think it's already who can contribute. I mean- uh, Well, okay, who can contribute? Uh, well, okay, FIB is, uh, has an, um, uh, um, our members are from all walks of life, you could say, yes, we, are, uh, we have academics, um, uh, definitely, uh, we have um, R and D uh, people, like researchers, like I, for instance. Uh, we have people from the industry, and industry is both the material industry, construction industry, design industry, if you can say so, in, in engineers, structural engineers, and um, we also have uh, more and more people from the domain that are related to life cycle assessment. And uh, this is a broadening of the scope of, uh, um, of the expertise within our group. And basically everybody can contribute if you are, um, uh, uh, we don't uh, distinguish between uh, uh, candidates only on the basis of the uh, knowledge and, and commitment. That's, I think, the only criteria that we are using in, um, in, uh, uh, um, for people joining the FIB work teams. Okay. I, I go to another question because we have a bunch of them. Uh, this is uh, interesting because it says in Nigeria, inflation has made it possible to increase the price of construction materials, etc. Can the FIB model code be a help on the reduction of construction costs? Or maybe uh, levels of approximation can help here, maybe. Yeah, well, different things. Yes, first of all, we uh, actually part of the cost is, of course, a uh, uh, material cost. Yes, so uh, what well, we do observe that our structures are actually heavily overdimensioned. So uh, reduction of the cost, if you can get them from the reduction of the use of the material, then it's both benefiting the uh, economy, but also sustainability. So that's that's always good. And here indeed, we have the different refinement models. Um, there are also different solutions. Yes, sometimes the use of more uh, uh, alternative material can can uh, can be a good way. There are also uh, a lot of costs that are involved in uh, construction process. So efficiency of the construction process. To some extent, model code addresses also that there are chapters on the quality of the uh, uh, management of the processes, uh, quality planning. It depends very much on which part is the cost factor. But on top of that, in the model code, there is also a uh, model for evaluation of the economic performance so that it gives you a kind of feeling in which we're, we're, what is the most sensitive part of it. Okay, I have a, one question here about... Uh, uh, also, one more thing. Sorry, David, because Sorry, I'm just thinking... Yeah, a differentiation in the uh, service life. Yes, if you can differentiate for your structure, the actually design service life, then you can differentiate with the help of the model code, the, the design you are using, consequence classes for the structure. If you can differentiate in that, then again, you can uh, get to the less expensive design by optimizing this aspect of your input. Mm -hmm. And they have another one here. Are there guidance for renovation and repairs? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yes, and there was a, a question by Wolfram Smith saying that what are interventional materials? Uh, there is a huge range of the intervention materials considered, and uh, and uh, well, actually, I had the slides, but I cut them out. Um, and uh, so, the full spectrum of intervention materials are being considered. And on top of that, there are two bulletins. FIB Bulletin 102 and FIB Bulletin 103, very recently released in this year, which include the 
detailed provisions for particular um, intervention techniques. Um, uh, there you will find um, uh, FRP uh, jacketing, um, uh, overlays, uh, external reinforcement, uh, cathodic protection, because these uh, two bulletins are actually the background documents for the, for the model code. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a, here one. How and when the model code will be integrated in design softwares? Oh, okay. Interesting question. Um, well, as FIB, we do have a very small activity towards that direction. We have opened a task group last year that is um, engaged in uh, preparing uh, models. I think they are using Python for that, uh, in codifying part of the models of the Eurocode. Uh, sorry, model, uh, model code, of course. Um, uh, so there is a group. Uh, it's not our intention as FIB to uh, provide software uh, that could be used, but not everybody can do it independently and joining that group can speed up the process since they are people competent and, and already working on it. What we will also develop is a, a book of examples for the, for the model code that can be also a good inspiration on how to use this kind of um, uh, tools in practice. It can be also a good uh, uh, test for, for software developers. I don't know, if, David, if I get the correct answer, yeah. you are more on that. Or is on, on the, we are uh, working on open source, uh, the code development yeah. for, on the examples of the model code, yes. Yes. Uh, we will not create the package ourselves, mm, this, if that was the question. But there is no embargo on using the knowledge from model code to do it, for yeah. doing it for, for by, by anybody. It's I mean, That's like, right. It's another question, are there guidelines for 3D printing? Uh, for 3D printing is at this moment not included in the in the scope of the model code. It Another. will be probably one of these things that we will be doing in the future, but not not yet. Okay. Uh, inform about the legal relevance of the model code. Uh, um, model code is not a uh, document that has a legal status uh, um, as some codes are. For instance, Euro codes are usually in Europe uh, designated by the national law as the documents. So this is a private document. Um, somehow, uh, private documents can also be uh, seen as the reference documents in the Netherlands, where I am from, occasionally in special cases. Uh, we will use model code as the reference document based on the agreement with the owner of the of the party that had commissioned the uh, the assignment. But again, this is a private uh, private document. Okay. Mm. And a questions about how do we include in the design provisions for recycle recycle wasted like construction and demolition waste. Okay, uh, at this moment, one thing is already included. So uh, reuse of recycled uh, aggregates is nicely covered. I would say it's uh, it's very operational and it uh, allows for the replacement up to 50%. So it's, it's good. Uh, we will, of course, uh, want to go further for the higher replacement percentage, but there is an... Um, uh, more research is needed, let's say, like that. What we also enable, though it's not yet explicitly in the model code, is reuse of reclaimed elements. Uh, there you would need to be more creative to do it based on the model code. We do it, but it's not yet in the, in the code provisions. We will also work on expanding the provisions in the future for enabling reuse of reclaimed elements from existing structure in new structures. Uh, what we don't yet have much about is the reuse of fine fractions and reuse of uh, reclaimed uh, cement. Uh, well, again, this is on our to-do list for the future. So I say uh, recycled aggregate concrete is in elements. Uh, you could do it, all other parts, not yet fully. Okay, we, Kola gave us five minutes maximum, so we'll try to use them. Uh, is the FIB database uh, accessible to the public? I will answer this one. Yes, uh, you have to register, but you can go into the web page and ask uh, to see the databases that we have. There are three or four up to now. Um, another one, are guidelines for using polymer concrete cover in the code? I think you already answered this, but maybe you want to give a comment. Um, well, we... Um... 
uh, geopolymer concrete and or other alternative binders are uh, partly addressed in the model code. I would say there are some, this is not yet comprehensive. So there are some guidance already about how to assess properties of these materials. There is something with regard to bond properties uh, of reinforcement in this kind of concrete. This is not yet developed to the level of operational structural design with this kind of materials. We will do it over the next year, one and a half, something like and maybe that. Maybe say that it's always possible to contribute, that we will have a group to develop uh, all the new knowledge and bring it into the model code, it will take time. But anybody that is interested is, we are happy to, to have. Absolutely. And then uh, there is here one comment that I can answer also. How do we get the document? You can uh, you can get it through the FIB webpage. And um, if you are a FIB member, you have a 50% discount to get it. And if you are a FIB subscribing member, you can view it online, as we have said before. So this is the, the ways that you can you can get this document. And you can also purchase it via the via the FIB. If, yeah, yeah, uh, the first so there, there are three levels, let's say three levels of benefits. Yes, for FIB mem subscribing members is free online. For the uh, other members is uh, with the discount and for any others, it's just, an, uh, let's that's say, right. like in commercial price. That's right. So, well, I think uh, I, we have a lot of uh, congratulations, Agnieszka, for the, for the great lecture. Thank you, Agnieszka. So a lot of... Uh, of congratulations. So, well, I would thank you again for for this very interesting, and uh, we'll be happy also to go more in depth in, in any other possibility in uh, any other occasion. Maybe I would uh, ask Kola Wole to to say some words and maybe close. Thank you so much, David. I am very happy with this presentation. Thank you, Agnieszka, for this uh, presentation. As we have as we have heard, a lot of people here really appreciate and then really enjoy the presentation. I mean, going forward, uh, having appreciate you, I also want to thank Wolfram Schmidt, Dr. Wolfram Schmidt, who is also on this platform, who really facilitated this uh, this uh, presentation with uh, in conjunction with the Society of Cement and Concrete Researchers in Nigeria. Uh, we are develop we are forming a group that we're going to work with the FIB so that we will be able to see how we can introduce or include some of these local materials into this, as, as was requested by uh, David, that whoever is interested is really welcome. We have already a platform for that. If you are interested, can they uh, get across to us? And then also the presentations and the recording of this, uh, pre, uh, these lectures will be shared with all the participants. Uh, that is upon, uh, we are going to have a, some, a small feedback from you. Once we receive that feedback, then we will share the presentation with you. We are also planning to see maybe that in the coming days, we have a full video of this uh, presentation in a more presentable way. Then we can also share this with you. It is all about sharing of knowledge and then uh, also practicing uh, knowledge. So once again, I thank uh, the Secretary General of FIB, uh, David and then Agnieszka for this presentation. We shall continue to work uh, uh, with you. So once again, thank you all the participants. I can't thank you enough for attending this. Uh, if not, you are here. If you are, if you are not here, then definitely this lecture wouldn't have hold. So I really appreciate you. In three months' time, we are most likely to have another exciting presentation, an amazing one indeed. Uh, let's continue to keep the knowledge and continue to interact and network with each other. So bye for now. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. So Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.